Jermaine DeVores is back in the house. Last time I saw Jermaine was two years ago. He came on my podcast. I think it was number six. Since then, Jermaine has made the huge sea change over to the big city where he's had these incredible jobs within the world of radio, heading up the multimedia side. But more interestingly, it was Jermaine moving over just before the COVID lockdowns. So I'm interested to hear his stories about moving into a new city, a new apartment, no friends, a new job, and just to understand how he coped with that situation. I'm looking forward to this conversation and I know it's going to be an entertaining one. Hmm. So welcome back, Matt. Yeah, I'm happy to be back in the new studio. Everything's looking really nice. <laughs> and I feel like I probably may have gained a bit or grew a bit more facial hair than last time. But I'll have to look. I don't remember what podcast you were. It was a while ago. I think it was before I left for Sydney. So it would have been 20... It was 2020. 2020. Yeah. 2020. Oh, yeah, crazy. See, see how fast time is. I know. Is. I know. And it, it's going too fast. It, like, I mean, even even this year, it's almost been a week since New Year's. I know. I know. I'm, I, I can't. Do you know, everyone I speak to is sort of going, you know, bring on 2023. Because I think 2022 was an attachment to 2021 and 2020. Yeah. And those were the sort of years that was hard for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody's just waiting for a fresh start. Yeah. I think just energy wise, like, okay, like, let's leave that behind us. And some people I know have had a great year last year, Yeah, but it was just, you know, it's just getting back to norm. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm the same. And you can feel it in the air. You can feel that every single person just wants to really, it's not even the fact that people actually even just want to be better. People want to change. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've, I've, some people I speak to the way that they, um, like when it comes to their careers, when it comes to even family, when it comes to who they are as people, most people I've spoken to have said, I want to be this now, this person I've always wanted to be, I'm going to change into that. It's a really, yeah. really weird, it's a good thing, but it's not like um, people are, are adding on to stuff. They really want to shift, which is, I think, a good thing. Do, what do you, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because, see, I know after in 2021 and 2022, a lot of people during that really frightening period where we didn't really know what this virus was. So, yeah. you know, everyone sort of went, fuck, we could die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like from young people to old people. Yeah. So I think there was a shift in like prioritizing the priorities in your life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sort of going, you know, what's important, family, friends, is this really what I want to do with my life? You yeah. know, with in terms of career. But I don't know now. I think people are just now that sort of, in Perth, I know, in Australia, I think COVID's sort of, yeah, it's still there, but it's sort of no one really is putting it as, oh, it's, yeah. it's this virus that could kill us all, you know? Mm -hmm. But I just think now it's just people just now going, okay, I just need a change. Yeah. Oh, I think also people are starting to realise that it's possible. Like, I mean, I think, I don't know much about people in Perth, but I know in Sydney, a lot of my friends who I've only met like a year ago have completely, you know, got their own business, became famous or, you know, became really successful in something they love doing. Or you see them go from like, I'm doing this job to doing this hobby to now making it a profession. People are seeing this stuff is possible. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think now 2023 is that reverb effect where people are kind of going, hang on, this person's done it. That person's done it. Why can't I do it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's just that it's, it's really getting just a large chunk of people now to really just gain some confidence and to change. People Social media doesn't help that either. When you start seeing, <clears throat> I suppose everyone's fake life. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why are they having that life? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you see, you see it all the time. But like, I, I don't know, like for me, <clears throat> I always try to see it as something that is, uh, you know, what, what what am I learning from this situation? Yeah. What, you know, I, I don't really, I try not to let it depress me, if that makes sense. Because everyone knows it's fake anyway, right? So, like, why can't we just take something that is from that, that syntheticness and make it something good for ourselves? I think so. Do you know what I mean? I think it's how you use it yeah. and the intent of why you're using it. The exactly. intention, you know. But, um, oh, what was I going to say? The, the, the. Oh, what did you just say just then? You just said making it into something that is... No, before that. Uh, as in about about the social media and seeing the, the syntheticness? And no, saying, before, before. You were just saying something before that. And I, I, had, a, I had an oh. idea about... Oh, look, 
<laughs> I have the worst memory, okay? I know. So, we're and just, it's a hot day. Just, it is. <laughs> so, 38 my degrees so today. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. But um, about, about social media. No, last time, last time I saw you, you were, you were working here at a radio station and you were planning on going to Sydney. Yes. Um, now, I've done that trip. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, got, when you went over to Sydney, why are you smiling to me? I'm just thinking of that person. <laughs> into 2019 going you have no idea what you're about to experience oh that's that yeah. that's what i was gonna say yeah do you know how how good it is for somebody to leave the nest right their home nest yeah because i was listening i was reading this book the other day and they were talking about in today's generation there is no rites of passage for young men mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um in that back in the old tribes and stuff they would send them out for two weeks for to have them hunting and do their thing. So they have this almost growth of survival. And they say that in today's time, you don't really get that because of the lifestyle that we live. But yet the guy said it's really imperative that his kids in their 20s leave home yeah. and experience life out there, which is pretty much what you did. And I'm thinking just for others that have been stuck in one place for most of their lives, what was the, you know, tell us about the trip of going over. Um, did you have a job before you left here? Yeah. So I was working um, at Nova in Perth and then I got asked to do a role for a breakfast show at Nova over there. Um, so I already had a, a, a job secured and ready to go. Oh, okay. Makes it um, easier. It makes it much easier. Yeah. yeah. So I was very blessed in that regard. Um, however, I did rock up uh, to Sydney during the whole COVID situation so at the times because i i thought I'm, I'm quite a social person so i thought you know i'll go there make friends you know everything's gonna be fine it's just like it's gonna be in perth just in a different city whatever but then you go there and then you realize oh, hang on you've got to kind of book tables with people if you want to go out to a club you gotta you know you can't just go to a club and meet people or you can't just go to a bar and chat to randoms or things like that and i learned that with sydney a lot of people are friendship group based there well just people kind of in, in my uh, peripheral circle. So I was quite lonely when I rocked up there at first, even though, you know, you had your job, you had people that you can meet. I was like, I've got no one that I, that I can meet. And even if I did want to do that, it was hard to do that at first because that was, you know, early 2021. So I had to go and find groups of people that I could go with to, to a club. And all you've got to do is sit down and drink. You can't stand up. You can't walk around. You can't dance. Um, so what was that? Because it was during it was during COVID, oh, so oh, so okay. gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. so you weren't allowed to stand up and mingle and like socialize. That's so so, yeah. that's so weird. <laughs> I know you had to sit down in 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 tables, um. So it was hard at first, and then slowly but surely, I then started to kind of find people and groups and everything like that. Um, but it was hard at first. Well, at least you weren't an introvert. And then having to make new friends. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't imagine someone who was an introvert at that time going there and expecting to. I mean, we were just saying before that no one can really settle in like the first year of, of moving yeah. to a different city. So, yeah. but but I couldn't imagine someone who's an introvert being able to even survive in that environment, um, especially during COVID. Well, it's really. I remember my first time moving to Sydney. Um, I went there on a two day trip first, and within that two days, I knew this is where I want to spend my time. Yeah. But it was so overwhelming. Yeah. The people, <clears throat> the public transport, trying to make your way around, you know, coming, being brought up in Perth most of your life and then suddenly going to a place where there's millions of people yeah. in a huge city. And But it, to me, it was exciting. And I think being young, you have that naive, which, which can work in your favor. Like yeah. you're not thinking about consequences as much in your 20s. No, no, you're not. Um. I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't thinking like that when I was in Sydney, um, because I thought it's just Perth in a in a bigger scale. Okay. That's how I thought of it. Okay. I think COVID kind of really just made you <laughs> think some really just you had a bit of a messed up way of thinking. I think. <laughs> I think that was just that, that's just kind of how it was. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that excitement that you're talking about, and yeah. you know how everything was big and the opportunity is there, definitely happened much later oh, when okay. I was there. But at the beginning, it was very much, this is just Perth, but bigger. Hang on. I can't really do much here because COVID has just made me feel a bit more. 
yeah, isolated. Yeah, tough time. Yeah. So, but um, but I definitely get what you mean afterwards. When everything opened up, I was like, okay, this is Sydney now. Uh, okay. I can see how huge this place is, and I can see how big sure. everything is, and how. And then as I got more jobs, I started to really understand. Whoa. Okay, this place is massive. If that makes sense. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge besides meeting people? Living in Sydney. Yeah. Oh God, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, the biggest challenge that I, mm, I think the biggest challenge that I had in Sydney was really trying to uh, maintain, to, to remember who I was, I think was the biggest challenge. Why? Why remember who you were? Why not start fresh? Because <laughs> I feel there's just a lot of temptation to really give in to the insecurity or to, to really give in to, uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 the standard story for any entertainer, you know, creative person going to a big city. You see how talented people are, how gorgeous people are, how, you know, influential people are, how all powerful they are, right? And you really look at yourself and you go, ah, okay, like, you know, <laughs> am I really like as good as I thought I was? Yeah, Am sure. I really as this, you know, um, and it really does take a real big hit onto your confidence. So you really got to remember, hang on, <clears throat> I was, you know, I, I, I yeah. always thought I was the shit, you know, <laughs> yeah. stop, stop. you got to really maintain that and, and maintain that confidence and who you are, why you came to Sydney or why you came to the big smoke, right? you know, what you want to achieve, what you want to accomplish. And really it's, it's, it's a hard thing to hold sometimes because you just want to kind of just sit at the back sometimes. Mm. Well, for me, that's how it was. See, I was, I was different. Yeah. Right. I, when I had the feeling of there was nothing in Perth in relation to film when I was here. Like I'm talking, you got to remember, I'm talking in the early nineties. Yeah. So there wasn't really a big film industry here. They, right. You know, people never took it seriously. And if you sort of said you were going into film, it was like the equivalent of saying, I'm going to get a job at NASA and be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> so what my thought was, and I know my girlfriend at the time is now my wife. We said, look, if, as long as we're in a place where there's these influential people and talented people. We may not be first on the list. We could be last, but we're at least flying in the same direction with yeah. with a group of people that have the same passion. Mm. Where it was very hard here, we were just like, "Oh God, where do we fit in?" Yeah. So I I think it was the time was very different because mm. it was just you know I, he was just a very um, blank slate. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose with you, you were already going into a similar industry in radio. You had a position. You people knew you in Perth. Yeah, yeah. So to so suddenly go somewhere and have no one know you, yeah, and have to start again. But that is also a really exciting thing. Yeah, yeah. I used to say to my friend, you know, I could be a serial killer, or I could be a brain surgeon, or I could just be anybody. But no one knows who I am. So in other words, there's no judgment on my past. Yeah, that's true. So people cannot judge me here because they don't know me. Yeah. And to me, in a way, that was quite refreshing. <laughs> I didn't even think of it that way. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I suppose you went way. from the same industry, the same industry, into a job, into a job. Yeah. but I, well, Yes, that's true. But also at the same time, I feel the industry in Perth, competitive industry in Sydney, is the people there are very different. I feel, I feel like in Perth, you know, you, you know, you do have your, your entertainers, your personalities, your talent, all those types of things. They're quite comfortable and very happy where they are. And, um, it's, it's very, uh, how can I say it in, in, in a way that's nice. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's warm here. It's very warm in, in Perth. I feel like in Sydney, it's a whole different ball game because there is just so much competition, co Yeah, so much competition. So the the conversations get a little bit a, a bit more to the surface the conversations get a little bit over more, there yeah um and you really like you know the, the, just the chilled casual layback conversation of just talking about stuff that just makes you laugh makes you warm makes you you know comfortable it's you got to really really fight for that over there in sydney i feel in that industry it's healthy though yeah yeah it is like competition Hel makes you better right it is it is um but yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to think of the right way to say it. Because when you, when you FaceTime me, that would yeah. have been like, uh, 
about oh, six gosh. months. Oh, gosh. I was in the thick of it during that time. Yeah. Well, uh, I could tell like this, but I was just like, oh, poor Jermaine. Because you just, mm. you were overwhelmed. You yeah. were lonely. You were working all the time. Yeah. Um, and you found that your tipping scales had just tipped to one side. And there was no balance in your life. Oh, absolutely. I, I was um, working on a huge, huge show. Um, I was, uh, it was <laughs> the most fun career experience of my life. I had so much fun on that show. Um, but yeah, I think I, I really got to experience really what a huge number one show was like, do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that was exciting. It was exciting at first because you're just like, this thing is, this thing is huge. You know what I mean? It could be like, it, it's the same thing as working on a big Marvel movie or on a big, you know, whatever. It was huge. Um, but then you also realize, oh, well, this is what it takes to always be at that number one peak. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And yeah, it really, really like, it, it, it was a hard thing to adjust to because it was just, you know, it's, it's not Perth anymore. It was constant, constant, you know, really, really, uh, what's the word, chipping away and making sure that everything that you make is of absolute quality everything that you, every uh, bit of content is engaging, intense, you know, really, really glorious, big. That's how every single thing had to be. And it's something we'll aspire to, right? We want to make these like sure. really grand, big things. But I think maybe when I was in Perth, I loved the idea of that. I was like, <laughs> I love the idea of just making Always. something big, fun, intense, you know, you know, really imp impacting and then when you're actually doing it you're like okay this is hard work oh yeah <laughs> okay like, this is not just something that just involves talent here this is like yeah discipline you know and navigating people properly. don't see that side of it no they don't you, know, you just spoke about marvel i have a friend that's worked on all the marvel films in, right. in the lighting department yeah and uh he was doing the hobbit uh, at the time and i had had enough in perth and i said you know his name's grant i said grant you know get me a job <laughs> And he turned around and said, no, he goes, I'm not going to do that to you. Yeah. And I was like, no, you don't understand. Get me out of Perth. Get me a job. I get paid well. He said, Wayne, trust me. Mm -hmm. And he, Grant was the guy, when I lived in Sydney, he came from Perth. He shot one of my first films and then he came over there and slept on the floor and his first gig was The Matrix. So he got on oh The gosh. Matrix and he, the dude hasn't stopped since The Matrix. Wow. So... But anyway, I remember him saying no, and I got, I got so frustrated. I was like, come on. <laughs> you know, it's like you talking to Jesse, your brother, yeah. like, give me a job. No. Yeah. And he just said, no, I wouldn't do it to you. And then a few months went by, and he sent me this photo of all the department lying on the ground mm. and getting fed, like, water, ice packs, um, electrolytes, because they were working that hard and it's a laboring intensive job. Mm -hmm. And he goes, this is what I saved you from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, people look at the final product. I, was, I suppose it's like listening to the final product on radio and watching the media on those websites and stuff. Yeah. But you don't see no the work that goes in behind you, it. You, you really don't. And like, it's not a bad thing. Like it, this is a, you're, you're with a team of people who absolutely love their craft. Are you saying and it's hard work, Jermaine, or are you just being a pussy <laughs> and it's like, you're working like four hours a day going, fuck this, four hours. <laughs> Look, there were days where it was like that. I'll be honest with you. There were days where it was like that, but <laughs> it, look, it was, it was intense. It was very intense, but, and, and it was you know, motivating when you see a bunch of other people just doing the same stuff, like, you know, just really just grinding away at something and everything mm. like that. But, you know, I think also, I mean, I know I keep pointing it back to COVID, but COVID really does make you go, I don't have to do this. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because everyone has this mentality where it's just like, how is life going to be easier for me? How is life going to be? Um, how can I make life my way? Yeah, and not ev you know, not everyone else's way, and I think that kind of seeped in a little bit in in the job. So just a time, yeah, bit. sure. But um, especially then when lockdown happened, and you know, you were just by yourself after going into work because what I did was considered essential work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. You're just making me just well, in radio. a way, <laughs> in a way, radio probably is. It keeps people sane. Like you know, people can tune in being locked in their apartments and home. 
you know, punching the walls and suddenly there's a little bit of normality coming in. That's true. You know? I mean, what also we're updating them what's happening, you know, in sure. the city, sure. you know, in their suburbs, all those types of things. Um, so, yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe the lockdown side of things made me kind of feel a little bit like just completely overwhelmed. Mm. But it was a good thing. It was a great thing seeing just at how hard people work to to have a, so a this is the like morning this. show this is the morning yeah, show okay. yeah this is a, it's a big morning show um in australia and it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun but it was hard work it was very hard <laughs> in a good way in a good way so what what did you learn from that experience that you can take with you oh because you've you're not there anymore you're you're somewhere no, else now right? no yeah i finished up a few <clears> months ago so what did you learn from there that you could take on uh to your next job or that you have taken on that? Yeah. Well, um, one thing I, I do to this day still is that an, um, I, I always try not to execute an idea anymore. Um, whenever there's an idea of something and you go, that's great, there's always just a bit of gold that hasn't been discovered from that idea. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, every single thing that we worked on when it's like, hey, let's do this, right? They always went, cool, now what else? Like it was never acceptable just to come in with an idea or to come in with a, a strategy or something. There was always just a bit of gold that was hanging at the end that we just haven't seen yet. And that is what takes that idea to something big. Right, right. And something huge. So tell the audience that are listening, what is it you do okay. within um, the within your industry. Yep. Yeah, so in um so I now I'm I'm there so I do social media for for radio, but I feel like my craft is in getting something that's happened audio-wise in a studio tr transforming it into into video and making that bigger and grander than how it ever seemed on air. So without losing the essence of what happened. So like, for example, there's um you know a segment uh I know like a segment in the show I'm working for today where uh, one of the radio talents said, thought that a porcupine falls off a tree. And she was obviously thinking of a pine cone, right? So it's it's just a dumb mistake, <laughs> right? On air, that sounds great. That sounds funny. That's perfect. But when it's video, you're, yeah. you're just, it's just two people talking on a mic. So how can we get that, use the shots that we have, add space, add everything around to make this something that's engaging and we'll get millions of views or you know or a lot of a lot of traction a lot of shares is it sh do you look after the website or you post it on all i post it on all their platforms really everything just turn your headphones the other way so you don't yeah so the cable's not oh is it my face I, I'm sorry I, I, no i just you know sometimes it gets in the way and i notice things like that now i should be noticing things because this is what i do for my job no but you know what it's it's actually really interesting and i know never thought of this before because the re the reason why I have I've only you're only my thirty eighth podcast yeah right so you know that what's attracted the listeners it's not so much the the viewers because I don't still don't get many views mm -hmm. but there's a lot of listeners listening in it's been those little video clips mm -hmm. that I post on especially the stories Instagram stories and reels yeah they have got me all my most of my listeners like yep. I literally posted on Facebook those video clips more for friends and family like I don't really have new listeners coming through that way but Instagram has been fantastic for me so that's almost you know how do I take how do I take a microphone conversation and just by putting visuals to it by putting pictures to it yeah um some I always put music backgrounds uh like scores to my previews oh yeah okay so i noticed no one else does that so <laughs> i'll just put in suddenly the music because i belong to epidemic sound okay they're fantastic yeah right okay <clears throat> like database is a sound of, library yeah okay yeah, yeah with composers and stuff so oh, i pay nice. like a subscription every month yeah and some of the scores i've heard on television shows mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. I've seen on streaming platforms. And I'm like, oh, that's part of epidemic sound, you know. <laughs> but I've noticed that the video has really pushed the audio. I, I think video is so important to uh, marketing a podcast or to sharing really anything, I, I, th think, I think, at so. the moment. Like we live in that age now where it's like, you know, Instagram, TikTok, these short form video platforms are really dictating how online culture goes. You know what I mean? Like mm. songs become big from, from these platforms. Um, you know, 
artists, it, it, artists, become, artists become huge. Movies become, yeah. you know, like, did you see the Matilda musical? That, that um, The it, young girl? Yeah. The, the that got girl the audition? Dancing, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how that movie <clears throat> sold. Not a big trailer anymore. Yeah. Or not these, True. you know, not these huge late night talk show interviews. These tiny little moments, these yeah. little bits that you, that you find. Yeah. And then you go, put that up. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't even need to be a high production thing. Mm. One thing that I learned in my job is that I, I like, you know, radio is something where, you know, people, you, people who work in radio love radio, right? Sure. So, but on a social media side of things, it's different. You can't really be a humongous radio fan and know how to market on social media. Cause I feel they're just two really different platforms. Sure. Right. So I, um, w whenever something happens on, on radio, that's funny. Most of the time, it's actually not the best bit to put up on online or on social media. It's always something where it doesn't require um, context. It doesn't require context, right? So, like, you want to be able to compete it, on radio. We're competing with what five other big uh, radio stations, you know, around the country. Online, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, anything like that, you're you are competing with a cat. You're competing, well, yeah. you know, true, you know true. I mean? you're competing with, you know, someone singing a Lady Gaga song, you know, you're competing with everyone around the world. So how is your content? It could be two seconds. It could be 15 minutes if you wanted it. How are you going to differentiate? How are you going to put yourself in, you know, as a standout between all of those different things? And, you know, and a lot of factors come into it too. Like, you know, you can make a high production, high quality thing, but what if someone else did that before you? Or what if someone after that's doing it? You know, you've got to like the most simple, the most straight to the point, the gold is all that you need and just pop so that So it's just up. finding that gold, right? Just finding that gold. And really that comes through like just audience feedback. Just keep putting things up and you'll see the views do its thing. We also live in an age now where we don't need followers anymore. Yeah, it's We true. live in an age where the algorithms push our videos out to people who aren't even following us. Yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? And it's almost like the more they see your videos, then the more they go, hang on, this guy has a pretty interesting podcast. Or, hey, this guy is a pretty interesting singer. Or this person, you know, makes really good toys. You know, well, something yeah. like that. And then that's how the the following, you know, the videos, everything just becomes huge. How, is there something in sp specifically that you've started to look for now to, in, to in, push out there? To push out in mm -hmm. videos? I always look at the first three seconds and I think everyone else subconsciously does that already. But the first three seconds I feel are the most important of anything. If someone hasn't given me the point of that video or a reason for me to stay in those three seconds. It's just a swipe off now. It's right? a swipe off. It's like, what's the it's point? It's so, so quick. It's so quick and it's not forgiving. Right. Mm. You know, we, you know, we both, you know, uh, have, you know, work done the acting film stuff, right? And it's, it's the same thing involving auditions, right? Like you want to make an impression, an impression in mm. that, those first few seconds because there's so much content for them to watch. Mm. And that same mentality applies now to to online media. To, See, it's to so videos. funny because it's in the movie days, you were given the first five minutes of a film before a hook happens, not right. the turning point, an actual hook yes. that, oh, I want to stay in my seat a bit longer. Five minutes. Suddenly now it's three seconds. Three seconds. It's not. You taught me that actually. I realized. Oh, did you, I? you taught me that at, at, at the Batadine class. But um, yeah. No, you're right. Three seconds. It's um, and sometimes it's even less because sometimes what if people are just really scrolling through and really trying to find the right thing? Scroll, 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 scroll. You know what I mean? It could even just be the first five point five seconds of of a clip. Where are you getting most of your audience? Is it TikTok? Uh, t TikTok. Yes. So the the most audience that I've made for a video for that big morning show, I think was about 21.9 million views. Wow. Yeah. On TikTok. On TikTok. I've heard TikToks like that. It's huge. TikTok is huge. If you make the right content, you will get rewarded with, with viewership <laughs> and interaction. Wow. There was one time, not to boast <laughs> about like all these things, but one of, I'll tell you my proudest moment. Okay, my yeah, proudest yeah. moment while in Sydney for, for my career so far 
is um, for the big show, I did a video of just the talent dancing to this song. Uh, it's by Alexis Jordan. The song is called Happiness. Uh, it's It was big in like the 2010s. It's like a one hit wonder. Um, and they were dancing to that song. So I thought, whatever, like, I don't even know if this video is going to work. Let's just put it up on TikTok, see what happens. Right. And it's just them dancing and singing to this song. That song is obviously quite nostalgic for some people, I think. And uh, the, the someone, like on TikTok, you can grab these sounds. So when you do a, when you do a video on TikTok, people can use your sound and repurpose it sure. for their own videos. But you still get credited for that video. Oh, so you okay. can track, you know, oh, the videos know that, that come from that sound, right? And someone grabbed that sound and made like a little dance video with like these colored effects on it. And that became a TikTok trend, that video and that sound. And it came to the point where 300,000 people made a video using that sound and that filter, that effect. And ultimately that sound got over 1 billion streams. <laughs> One That's billion insane. streams to the point where this the songwriter of the song was contacting us, being like, <laughs> "This song is like going back in the charts. Like this is this is insane." Wow! Just from me going, I don't know, this video might work. Let's put it up. So and you, it went you, huge. So you really don't know. You just you gotta, don't know. I suppose you just got to be in tune as things are happening to sort of go, hey, let's capture this, let's capture that. Yeah, let's just have a bit of fun. You know, I think with that video, I knew that that song was quite like, you know, I mean, like I was dancing that song when I was like 16, 17 years old. <laughs> so I was like, you know, and that song was playing on the ra on the radio during that time. So I was like, okay, let's just, let's just put up and see what happens. I think a lot of people also forget that they too are the audience. You know, you when you sure. put something up, you know, a lot of people, especially like in a corporate setting where people make corporate videos, they always think, oh, as the businessman, like, oh, yeah. I, I want to push this product. I want to just always think as the audience member, as yourself. Sure. If I was watching this, would I like it? Yeah, probably. Okay, I'll put it up. And don't lie to yourself either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just go, yeah, I'll put it up. I like it. I think it's funny. I'm going to put it up. Yeah. Because there'll be someone out there who does find it funny too. Yeah. And that person will send it to someone else. That's all you've got. You know, yeah. it's like when I do previews. Um, like podcasting started, it was quite a selfish endeavor <laughs> yeah, in that yeah. I was a naturally curious person, Yeah. but if I had to, you know, if someone's doing stem cell research and I'm like, I know nothing about that. What if I contacted you? I'd buy you coffee. You tell me what, you know, no one's going to say like, who is this guy? Yeah, right? yeah. I'm busy, <laughs> but having a podcast mm. gives you a little leverage. So I realized quite early I thought if I can, all these people that I'm wanting to talk to, now I can sort of say, hey, I've got a podcast. If you want to come on, I'd love to talk more about stem cells. And they're like, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, more often than not, it'll be okay. Yeah. So it started off quite selfish uh, in, in that way. But then, like you said, you end up just talking about things you like yeah. and that you want to know more about. And so these little clips that I put out, it's almost like, no, that's what I've learned today from Jermaine. Or oh, this was a funny conversation that both of us had, Yeah, you know, and I'm not thinking pretty much past that. And I know I should, because look, I do, I do all the socials. Do you do all the socials? Yeah. Oh, so, yep. so oh my yep. God. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, see, I can't imagine that. I have, I mean, I've yep. got the content of an hour or so. Yeah. So for me, I've sort of got it in a routine schedule now, like, okay, I go through, I multicam this and I take yeah. this and I, I'm, I flag all where all the previews are, but it takes time. Yeah. It and takes, it takes time, time, like being able to do previews and then because podcasting is so different, it's not a tiktok -y thing, right? Yeah. But it's long form. Yes. So I noticed that sometimes I used to post 15 or one minute to two minute stories, mm -hmm. like one story, but because Instagram is split. Yeah, you got to split. Yeah, right. And people would watch the first two and then not watch and anything off. else. Yeah. So then I thought, okay, I've got to start doing 15 second grabs. Yes. Of each one. Yeah. So don't put like two minutes and have it split into 15 seconds or so. Well, one thing, one thing I do for Instagram stories is um, I use that as a method to tease audiences. So okay. you want to, if, if you want to talk about, I don't know, someone talking about, uh, I don't know how, how 
stem cell research or something really, really interesting, right? You want to be able to get that bit of content, really take out the essential bits that give away those answers, but enough that gets gets people interested and that want to watch that want to watch more. hear more, and and then that will drive the listenership over to to that podcast. Sure. That's just the way I do it. Do you and post think, a minute or do you post uh, on Instagram post itself, like um, longer content? Mm, I try. I I don't. We used to do that in the previous gig, um, but. Reels is really where it's at. And yeah, also to be is. fair, social media, their algorithms are pushing reels, reels and shorter form content. What about YouTube shorts? The, YouTube is really trying to push that. Because I've just been yeah. looking at those recently. Yeah, they're you know? pushing that. But also I do feel YouTube, it's funny, YouTube in like to some creators, content creators, um, their content is worth more when it's on YouTube. I think because the engagement on those longer form videos is really right there. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? Like people are firstly are choosing to watch that. It's not being brought to them. Sure. So they've chosen to watch it and they'll stay and watch it. And it's one of those ones where the first three seconds doesn't need to be engaging. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and now sure. I think I think it's YouTube. YouTube now, gosh, I just feel like, I'm, am I this like video content wizard now? <laughs> you're you're, thinking, you're uh, a symphony of information. Yeah, I just realized, I was like, okay, now, now I understand my purpose on this <laughs> podcast now. Um, is I've on YouTube, there's actually uh, like a little graph that shows you where most of the audience yeah, that's is, right. is watching your content. And where well. they drop off. And Yeah. Mm. So YouTube, I think you can still do longer form content and be successful at it mm. and, 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 you know, get some good engagement on it. Um, but I, yeah, I think all the other platforms where people are socializing, communicating and sharing stuff on it's those quick. platforms needs to be quick. Yeah. It needs to be really, really quick. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. So, um, and I don't know, like, I mean, I, I know your podcast is obviously very different from the radio shows where I'm working on, you know, commercial breakfast radio where everything's going to be fun and wild and hectic and yeah. all that type of stuff. But I was always encouraged to, to, like I said before, to take content and really embellish it visually. Whether that's, um, you know, you, some people choose to put captions, you know, and really, yeah. you know, aggressively um, animate those. Or uh, some people like to, uh, you know, add photos and references. I was the type of person that would reshoot things. I'd uh -huh. be like, you know, um, a good example is someone from a reality show had like this horrible phobia of feet. Right. And then we got some, the people in the studio, like, you know, the panel operators to take their shoes off and he was freaking out. Right. And it <laughs> sounded amazing on air. It sounded great on air. You know, he's like, Oh no, it's wearing shoes. Um, but then visually it looked boring because it was just like three people with no shoes on. Yeah. So as soon as he left, I was like, everyone take off your shoes in the office, in the building, everywhere, everyone's shoes off. And then they all took their shoes off barefoot and I was filming every single one of them with their feet right into the camera. I got, I even got one of our um, producers to go back into the studio next to where that guy was sitting and to put his feet on the table. So it looks like yeah. there was just all these producers just with their feet out right in there, added some horror music on top of it. And that was our 30 second video and it went so well. Oh, good. good. So, so like you said, it's embellishing and yeah. Yeah. Embellishing it and just having a bit of fun, you know. With, Has that with become like a Jermaine style now? Uh, it, it, it used to be, I like, I mean, I, not on the new show cause the new show is, it's a drive show that I'm working on. So the drive show is like very, um, it's more laid back and, and, okay. and relax, but there is hilarious content with that laid back kind of style. So yeah, th sure. that stuff works. Um, but when there's an opportunity to do it, I'll do it just because <laughs> it adds a bit of cinema to it. Do you know what I mean? Everything's exactly. just, just a bit more fun. Um, and it just, and also like think about it in this way with radio, you know, it's also a podcast, you know, it people is. can, can listen to that podcast. So if you make that video really fun and engaging and so hectic, people are, are going to want to listen to that, yeah, yeah. to that, you know, three hours. Cause radio, show. radio has a podcast too, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, I've noticed. they have a huge podcast business now, like most mm. radio networks. Well, they had to, didn't they? Yeah. They have to, to catch up. They're also doing a lot of apps now. So the, the, the radio networks are starting to create their own apps where you can 
listen to their shows and also their original podcast content as well. Yeah. Because um, I know Nova has. I know Nova has. Well, it's like Spotify. Like they've got yeah. videos as well. Exactly. So you can upload, which is, you know, because <clears throat> I edit the videos. Yeah. I don't edit what we're saying, mm -hmm. but, you know, things like if we want to go to the restroom or, you know, toilet or coughing <laughs> yeah. spat, like I always do. Yeah. Like I edit those. And Spotify will just like put up your video. Okay, cool. Or That's put awesome. up your audio and upload your video and we'll separate the audio from the video. So we'll have a podcast and a video podcast. But mine are so different. Yeah, right. Okay. In that um, audio takes a while. It's, you know, video, if you've got a space of 10 seconds, it's a long time. But when you've got a video where you're seeing someone like contemplating or thinking or breaking down inside, it's it's captivating. You know, it's engaging, but it's just dead noise, dead silence on audio. Yeah. So it's those sort of things that I sort of got to go, okay, that's, you know, this guy's thinking a lot. So we're going to have to cut that back a little bit, but I'll leave that on the video. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, those are the things I've had to sort of adjust in that way. The other thing is, what is it with feet? <laughs> I had, I had, I, had, I had a girl that we were talking about sexual fetishes, and um, and she brought up um, a foot fetish, but she knew this glam girl that had such a big fetish for bad feet. Oh, yeah, it was so weird, and you know, oh. like the, the the guy would ask her to have sex, and she'd be like, "No, but can I suck your feet?" Oh, and, okay. And, and this guy's feet was known in that town to be the worst feet ever like they were saying go get her operated on and stuff oh but, but oh so it's like really bad like disease and, oh, oh. <laughs> but sh that was a fetish and you know we laugh about it but i pretty much every fortnight that podcast was way before yours i still get messages oh really yeah. about feet well about feet is the main one the other one was microphilia and macrophilia like people that are attracted to small like people oh, but oh, that big oh. like figurines and then giants so oh. um yeah that like they had these guys spending like thousands of, of hours building a city out of lego and then hiring like this six foot eight woman in bikinis to come in and smash it all up and they'd pay her thousands and thousands of dollars oh. and you know we spoke about where these fetishes come from but man I get messages every week to a fortnight on macrophilia, feet fetish. Wow. Because I think people just also, they don't know why. Like, why have I got this sort of a thing? But I've never had a fetish for bad feet. Yeah, I know. That's, I know. Say, that's a pretty feet. Yeah. And, you know, and feet like that. But it's weird, man. Well, on a show that I was working on, there were there were conversations um, with callers about um people who had fetishes and um yeah there were some really really weird ones one had bad one was bad breath someone had a, had, a, had a real fetish for bad breath oh my god yeah and it was just simply like, like but where does that come yeah, that's I what know. interests me though yeah it has to i'm not sure i'm not sure but i feel with feet i mean feet i think is probably the most like common it is because it's all the yeah it's hidden and it's, it's like you know everyone's got everyone's got them and yeah, it's, 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 just, it's something that you know you never see but sometimes see but yeah. the bad feet i don't know about the bad feet yeah I, I, that was a total shock for me the bad feet oh jermaine i was gonna did you happen to see this is mj right did you happen to see there was a an ex cia agent that worked for the cia but he was also from the defense force and he was put together with a team to influence the music business for specifically the, the African American industry. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, it was so fascinating because this guy came out because he was, I think he was either sick yeah. or he'd had enough of what he was doing. And he said, look, I'm wanting people to come on and join me of people that I've worked with because you can only go so far and we've broken, we've crossed that line. We've crossed that Rubicon many, many years ago, but he says, now I'm giving my face on this video because I know that people are, it's probably going to end my life. But what I do have is phone recordings of Michael Jackson pleading that people were going to kill him. And for you now, I'm going to release one of them. And 
this video was Michael Jackson pleading to a friend that if he doesn't do anything, people are coming to kill him. It was the last phone call and it cut to Latoya talking that Michael had told her many times that people were going to kill. But hearing Michael Jackson's voice scared yeah. in this phone call, mm. it just, because there was things that he didn't want to go along with. Almost yeah. Kanye, you know, I'm yeah. not going along with that system. Yes. Um, but I just, I just never heard that before. It's interesting you say that because, um, he, <laughs> we're getting into the Michael Jackson fan talk here now. So, <laughs> but, um, he, I thought of you when oh, I saw yeah, that, I was yeah. like, Ooh, I wonder if Jermaine's I've, seen this. Yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't seen that, but I definitely know of his paranoia about Sony trying to kill him. Um, oh, yeah, really? Yeah. Um, he, well, and this is what Latoya probably said in that interview as well. That she he, didn't mention so. Oh, she, oh, well, she said they're going to, she was, he was nervous. He was worried that, um, that people were going to kill him for his catalog because he owns the, uh, the Sony ATV catalog. So this is actually, this is why Michael Jackson came back to, came to Perth yeah. in the eighties. No, but that was to buy the Beatles catalog. That was, yeah, the, the AT, the Beatles was the ATV catalog, which had oh, Beatles okay. and all these oh, other musicians okay, in so it. Yeah. And then in- That 90, was a bit of a shit thing to do though, behind Paul McCartney. Oh, space. well, well. Come I mean, on, guess, Jermaine. <laughs> come on. You know what? Do you know who gave Michael the idea of buying yeah, catalogs? Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Yeah, but not his, <laughs> not the Beatles. <laughs> well, look. I mean, yes, but apparently it was a savvy business move. Yeah, but but what I was hearing about Paul McCartney was that Paul and Yoko apparently were like just really just like taking their sweet time about this business deal. I don't know too much about that that side of thing, so I think that's how the purchase ended up oh, happening. Okay. But um, but yeah, Michael owned the Beatles catalog and then sold um half of it to Sony. So that Michael could own half Sony's catalog too. So it became the biggest music catalog really? in history. It was the Sony ATV catalog. And Michael was like really worried, like during the end of his life, that Sony was organizing for him to be killed so that they could own the rest of the catalog. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So that was his whole, you know, thing about it. I mean, of course, fans and everyone are thinking, oh, you know, Michael died because of Sony, all these types of things. And um, but the weirdest thing is that when like a few years after Michael died, Sony ended up buying the catalog from the estate at m a much lower price than what it was worth. So this sparked another big controversy and all these types of things. <laughs> so, so for what you're saying about the video, you know, like, I mean, I'll have to look at it to see if, you know, if it's true or, you know, all these types of things or if some, you know, a CIA agent, whatever, mm. but I would definitely, I'm not surprised that Mike would have that kind of paranoia about the whole Especially thing. Especially when, you, when you're talking that much money. Yeah. And oh, they've, yeah. they've gotten rid of people for a lot less. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, and I'm trying to think, of what, what year was this? Um, this was like in two, 2002, I think. Michael had rallies against Sony. So um, he, he blamed the the CEO of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola, for being a racist and not um, marketing his new album oh, really? and trying to get him out of the business. And then Michael did these rallies in like like these um, like you know racial church rallies in New York and in London, really? all these things like completely like denouncing uh, Sony Music. Well, he's not the only one. Remember George George Michael, Michael. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Prince kind of did the same thing. I think mm. with Warner Brothers. Mm. Uh, um, and that was Michael's Michael's thing. Another conspiracy. Sorry, I don't want to go into the conspiracy thing. No, it's more. This is about Michael at the same time. <laughs> is that Michael's will that the state, you know, ended up, you know, agreeing to and you know, abiding by, was signed on the day that Michael was doing a Sony rally in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah. So a lot of fans are like, they think the the will is fake because of that. Weird. That is weird. I don't. I don't want to. I don't, but I don't do you know what? Leave, there's, but, but there's so there's. I do you know it? One would sort of um, deny it before, but I think so much weird stuff has happened in the last five, ten years. Yeah. That. Yeah. I think you have to sort of go. Okay, let's look into it a bit more, because I think before we were just so blinded by everything. Yeah. Who knows what's happened? Like you've got so many of these artists dying. Yeah. I mean, just actors. 
you know, singers and making the wrong deals. And you got some of them coming out as Luciferians now and, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, you know, weird stuff happening with, um, what's her name that she collapsed on stage and she was screaming out master. I can't do this. Anymore. Oh gosh. I have no idea. Oh <laughs> yeah. She does the, um, menu log, uh, you know, Oh, uh, Katy Perry. Yeah. Katy Perry. Really? Yeah. And um, her father's come forth and sort of said to, that she's she's turned to you know Lucifer oh. and stuff like that and and then on stage she she collapses after saying Master I can't do this anymore I'm tired I can't do this and when she collapses and the bodyguards go and grab her and stuff just weird, yeah, weird ass stuff. stuff I mean do you also think maybe that could just be them just adding a bit of you know, a it bit could of be press. You know, a bit it of, could be. It's a bit of publicity stunt, but it's, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. It's not I, just I her. Do you remember well. the whole Illuminati thing that was happening yeah. in like the yeah. 2010s, and everyone thought, oh, they're all following a cult. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I do. I do agree though that there are definitely, um, you know, uh, the Hollywood entertainment music business. There's a lot of uh, secrecy going on. A lot, For of, sure. a lot of things that uh, people aren't aware of, and things that obviously, if exposed, will you know perhaps. Well, years ago they were talking about an island where billionaires go and have sex with young kids. Years ago, yeah, and everyone was just like, no, and British royal family involved, and people were just like, this is rubbish. Suddenly, Jeffrey Epstein yeah, comes along, comes out, and it's suspicious. Suddenly, you know, he gets killed. He did get killed, right? Yeah, and all this stuff. Where's that black book? All the names yeah. are gone because I think it's the high, it's the echelon of high society. Yeah, if that was released, the community would crumble. There'd be high court, judges, Supreme Court judges, and yeah. you name it's on there presidents and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, suddenly people are being more aware of these conspiracies that are now fat. They're starting to question other things yeah. that has been sort of pushed under the rug. Yes. Um, and I think the, the biggest influence on society is music and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Huge, mm -hmm. huge. How is radio when it's coming to these political sort of changes in, in culture? It's kind of hard because, I mean, commercial radio i don't think there is a, a giant amount of uh how can i say it uh pushing agendas yeah mm. but that being said actually you know where i used to work there was quite a big you know there, there was a lot of coverage on the election um and scomo and albo both came uh, both, both, yeah, both, yeah, I know. I can't believe we call them. Doesn't that sound so like, Joe. It's, Yeah, it's so classy. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> go on, Albo. You know, they're the ones that we're voting for for the election. Jeez. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was covered quite heavily um, on those shows. But I guess you have to when you're like the you know one of the biggest shows um, in the country. So, but um, I, yeah, to be honest with you, I'd really tried to stay out of it. I really like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're talking, like I was running their social media, so you definitely see the, uh, the, the sure. division on uh, online and especially when it came to the vaccine, oh, oh it was God. intense. Do you know what I mean? Because there were times that we would have to actually, this is this, I can bring in my little social media expert bit into this bit, here. Yeah. but, um, it came to a point where we were like the only safest option for, uh, our show, the the branding, everything like that, was just to leave the comments as they were, right? Because you see people writing. I mean, we obviously had to monitor like really harmful comments. True. But the moment you hide someone's comment, or yeah, yeah. you know, at worst, delete a comment or turn off the comments, I'm, I've never seen this anger that just comes out of people when it came to social media. People were just finding anywhere they could to have their opinion, mm. you know, really just. <laughs> um marked anywhere so um we were like okay well this is where people want to vent their frustrations you know they can talk crap about our content or whatever like we just have to let it let, you it, let, it, yeah. let, let them let them talk you know I mean? yeah. let them have their their voice and let them speak there's a lot of angry people um there's a lot of angry people it's funny i heard that saying um now yeah, i've got to get this right um tough times create hard people tough people Mm -hmm. Tough people creates easy times. Easy yeah. times creates soft people. And soft people create hard times. So it's almost like we've, we're in this for the last 70 years. We've had no massive famines or world wars. 
No. When people finding life too, like when life is actually easy, and I'm not saying easy in that way, I'm saying that we haven't starved to death or gone through wars, people tend to get angry mm. at small things that happen. When you have small people, soft people that have had it pretty good, most of us have, they are angry people. Yeah. Uh, you know? And so I think you have to, they will fight for anything. So you you could put up, I mean, they'll have, I'll have comments on just you and I talking about this. Yeah. It's just people need, that people want to have their say. Well, um, yeah, absolutely. And, but also one thing that I've observed online and on social media is that a lot of online content, um, you know, people obviously have their opinions. I feel like a lot of the conversation at the moment, dare I say it, you know, you know, people think are going more to the left, to the left, right? As mm -hmm. in like a lot of online media. So where you find the the opposition or people who are opposed to that type of content, you find them sure. in the comments, right? I think that's, <laughs> you know, that like, where else can they go? Do you know what I mean? Like who, who responds to the comments? Uh, as in apart from our radio profiles. Yeah, from your, from your we, socials. We well, we didn't. We don't do that. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we, we don't respond. Well, I, I don't either. <laughs> unless it's harmful. Unless unless it's something that's like we don't, you know, when we're, we're not supportive of people doing this in yeah. our comments, you know, very general, very broad things. But as a, like if, uh, for any organization, it's not a good idea to to make comments. To get involved. <laughs> yeah, to get, because what happens is two things happen. People start to see, oh, you guys are swaying towards viewing it this way or that way. Oh, and they could. Yeah, yeah you make a I mean? decision to yeah, and then they'll, off. they'll screenshot that and use that as oh, you know some God. sort of thing. Or the second way is um, ah, oh, the access is open now. You know, now that you've now that you've said yeah. something, now we really can talk, and now we're going to expect you guys to make comment with anything that we say. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it really is just a good platform just to get people just to write what they want to say, yeah. express how they Isn't feel. Isn't it funny because we're always taught to engage, and I learned early. Um, I, you know, Joe Rogan said earlier on, um, I don't read any comments. I started to at the beginning yeah, and then I just thought, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I mean, little things, I said it last time, like I, I'd make a mistake, a simple mistake. Um, and I'd get reminded of it every week, yeah. even though I've, I've written there said, look, I know the mistake I made. And it wasn't a big mistake. It was saying that Alexander the Great was Greek and not Macedonian. Oh, look, okay. I know, yeah. but. Every fucking week <laughs> for months, Jermaine. And then, uh, and then, you know, I get those fetish things and people commenting that are generally nice, but just don't read them anymore. Don't read them. That's, no, a good, no. that's a, I think that's a very valid and reasonable thing to do. Well, I felt um, a lot lighter. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you can't help sometimes if someone brings up something that you've said and, yeah. and then takes it in a different direction. You are thinking, oh, did I put it that way? Yeah. Wasn't I, was I articulate, was, wasn't I articulate enough to view my, yeah. you know, to push my expression in this way? No, I just, I'm just talking like anyone else. We yeah. make mistakes. We talk, especially on podcasts. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. just take the flaws and take the positives and write your comments, but don't expect me to engage in a argumentative yeah. discussion you know well one thing also to keep in mind is that it must take quite a lot from people to actually want to write that as, as well at the same time right so like as in a lot of bored people <laughs> yeah well yeah <laughs> but like if you think about it the reason why like i mean i have never been subject to anything where uh you know i've comments have made me feel you know uh, sure. you know, bad or mm. anything like that. But, you know, you have to really think, okay, if someone actually was willing to go and comment that, that means either two things. It means either, yes, they were really bored or whatever, yeah. or they were so mad and so really, you know, uh, uh, infused into this content that they just had to say something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So either way, it's a positive. Yeah, it, it can be a positive in some regard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Do you, <laughs> do you ever feel like you were saying, we're just going to put it there? of sparking wars on purpose, you know? Oh. <laughs> Jermaine, well. <laughs> come on, Jermaine. <laughs> um, Dangle that red flag. There's been times, you know? there's been times where, uh, look, I'll be honest with you. I love the Harry and Meghan oh, stuff God. that's coming out. I love it. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm, I, I really like the doco. I like, you know, I, I'm just one of those people. Are you a but, royalist? 
Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable in it to, to call myself that. Do you watch The Crown? No, I don't. No, oh. no. I, I watched Harry and Meghan and all the Princess Diana interviews. <laughs> That's about as, fur, as far <laughs> as I'm going. Right. I know. <laughs> See, I'm so, not a royalist at all. Oh, right. Okay. Out of all my family. All my family are royalists. <laughs> yeah, right. Weird. Like my dad, the, the most, you know, stubborn and hard man yeah. is a royalist. It's weird. I'm the only one that's not, but the crown's brilliant. Oh, right. Okay. I'll oh, we'll have to check it out. I will have to you check it out. It, yeah, I know, because I'm, I'm so into the whole Princess Diana story at the moment. I'm obsessed with it. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out. But um, with the Harry and Meghan <laughs> thing, we there was a segment on this on, on the show that I'm working on at the moment where – they spotted that the, uh, the there's a shot with the paparazzi um, shooting Harry and Meghan, Meghan, Meghan. And that shot was actually never on Harry and Meghan. It was a shot from a Harry Potter premiere Oh, that, that they spliced into the documentary. Oh, that's cheeky. Yeah, right? And like me as someone who's like, he edits video and all that type of stuff, it's just a simple, not a mistake, but it's just one of those things. It's like, yeah, put it in, like whatever. You know, it gives the, off the same message. Anyway, so they talked about it um, on the show. And then I was like, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to make that a video. Not because... I want there to be, you know, a fight, but I know that if I put that up, it's going to create conversation. Yeah, it's sure. going to get a ton of comments. It's going to get a lot of viewership. And um, and I was right. I think it's gotten like about two or three million views <laughs> and everyone is just really going in on each other. So weird, isn't it? That, that's, yeah. that one documentary has sparked... It's divided. It's div yeah. It's absolutely divided. I mean, like I've... Even my ex-workmates have had like, not arguments with, but I've kind of been like... Come on, like, you know, you've got to have a bit of empathy, but then, but after the fights <laughs> that I've had, I'm like, I'd rather just stay out of it and just not talk about it. But, you know, you know, in my job, in what I do, you know, I thought this is a perfect example of getting something that everyone's talking about that everyone is, you know, yeah. divide about and really just making, let's just, let's just make the most out of let's, it and really. And also, what, make the most out of let's have a discussion or let's just put fire to the fuel. Let's start for, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, because I didn't want I didn't want hate, you know, because I've already seen how much, you know, they're all getting from it. Yeah, what I believe they're all getting from it. But it was just more of take advantage of what everyone's talking about and let's create a really heated discussion. I think is probably the <laughs> the best way oh to say god, it. Oh my god, I would love that job. I would love your job. Just the best bit. I mean, oh. and I, I used to do that all the time with so many other different. Um, so many other different topics and things like that as well. When it comes just to simple things like um, one of our producers couldn't couldn't go to to the World Cup because he was he, he was um, unvaxxed. Do you really? know what I mean? Yeah. And then we <laughs> we were like, here you go, we got World Cup tickets, but you're not vaccinated. So um, you know. And then I put that up for everyone to watch because some people would be like, you know, oh, that's. Um, you know, that's so shit. You're, you're a provocateur. Well, Jermaine, no, you're I, a provocateur I, on I'm social only, media. I'm only getting what's coming from that show and putting you know, it up. You know the results of what's going to happen. I know the happen. results. <laughs> I know the results. you got a but, bunch of pit bulls and you've got like this, you know, beautiful steak and you're just throwing it in oh, the, yeah. the, the, the mouth. Well, you got it sometimes, uh, you know what I mean? You've got to just have a little bit of just a little. No, Jermaine, I would. You would, exactly. I'd be the worst. Exactly. I'd be the worst guy. And you know how. I'd you... bring up Nazis and everything. Oh. <laughs> Not in a Kanye way. Oh, yeah, right, right. Some conversation about <laughs> Some it. Some conversation. But I'd, I'd head into <laughs> politics and religion and, oh, yeah. you know, all the things that are out now yes. as well. Because oh, yeah. I think discussion should be had. Discussion should be had. Yeah. I, I do also think that there is a bit of responsibility that everyone should have on social media. Yeah. And when it comes to putting, like, you know, because you look at all these, you know, influences to these days and they're putting up just anything. And I'm mm. like, you know. I also think that, you know, children could be watching this. Or I think that, sure. you know, people people who are very mentally, dist like mentally ill or, you know, um, not in a bad way. I'm not saying in a bad way. but Serial, like serial killers. Yeah, 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 or <laughs> just people who could do harm to other people mm. could watch that. And I, sure. I would hate for people to think, you know, and also it's a radio show. So we've got to, we've got to abide yeah, by sure. our codes. And Does your you face know. go on a lot of those posts? Um, uh, sometimes not on the, the show I'm working on the previous show. Yes. Yeah. Because every producer had their own person, like their own character on the show. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
yeah, I was on the show. I, w- I was on a few of them. Not not every single one of them, but yeah, a few of them for like some sort of segment or. Um, but this job you got now, it's more. It's just more about them. It's so laid back that mm. you know. It, it must be nice, yeah. For you, oh, I love it. I honestly <laughs> do love it. I love it because I escaped the madness a I've little es- bit. I've escaped the madness. I have amazing hours, and um, I am now really starting to fall in love with Sydney. Yeah, yeah. It, it took me a long time because it was just so unbelievably hectic and insane, and you're meeting absolutely every single person who's like a big deal there. That you know, like I was saying before, you got to really remember and hold who you are to kind of sure. stay strong in that industry, in that city, in that business. Sure. Um, but now that I'm at this new place, um, it's more laid back, and I feel just a bit more like. I, I, I have I have capacity to be able to, uh, to to explore the city and really get to know myself too, um, because it I, makes a difference. Doesn't it, it does. It makes a huge difference. And um, are you dating anyone? No, I'm not. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever changes in your in your love life. Like uh, I talked to you eight months ago. No, I can't no. date anyone because of work. <laughs> the hours are nice. Everything's like, are you dating anyone? Nah, not anyone. No, but I'll be open to it. I'll be open to it this time. I mean, I've only started that new gig like two or three months oh, ago. Oh, okay. So, uh, but um, I would be open to it um, because it's such a huge dating ball over in Sydney. Oh, massive. It's, yeah, it's massive. And um, no, I think it'd be nice. Are you too picky, Jermaine? Yes. You I am. I'm, I'm a quite a picky person. The only reason why I'm a picky person, I think it's due to the fact, it's going to sound so stupid, but I think it's due to the fact that I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan. Why? <laughs> and it, people that I date, like I've gone on dates with people and I've been oh, like, I I'll sneak in a little Michael Jackson thing there and just, they'll go, no, he's a bit of a, all this. And I'll just be like, cool. Well, that's <laughs> it for us. We're done. <laughs> that's, that's the mark. That's right? it because that's you're going to hate, you know, every Saturday of mine, what I'm going to be doing is playing Michael Jackson every single, you know, hour of the day. So, um, <laughs> what else is there besides what? Michael Jackson? Oh, God. Oh, there's a lot. There's actually, there's quite a bit. I, I, I'm a type of person who I really don't like people who, uh, how can I say this? Uh, they put themselves on the pedestal. Mm, who really, ego yeah ego mm. right and it's hard to find like especially and also i feel like it's a bit of an oxymoron because i date people who are very driven and who want to be the best they can but be you can be that without yeah. having that, that ego. ego and yeah. and i guess maybe i've been unlucky but the people that i've met who were driven and people that i was attracted to had massive egos massive egos and at first and you can tell the people have the egos because they appear too humble at the beginning Oh, right. So I feel really? like, yeah, those people, the people who have the egos that think they're better than else and like are quite transparent at the beginning tend to kind of have like, I feel they're quite moderate, right? But the people who hide it, who really, really hide it, but inside they know that they are just better than everyone else. You really see that like much mm. later on for me personally anyway. Um, so I don't like those types of people because if they feel like that about people below them, imagine how they feel like in a relationship when they think they're right about something yeah, or true. when they're, you know, or when you're having an argument, would they be willing to compromise? Would they so, be willing so to? Are you, are you, so you sound like a, one of those decent young fellows that wants a long-term relationship, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I've gone through quite a bit of the experiences of a 20 something year old gay man trying to date in this new generation. I know, generation. you know, whenever I talk about, to, whenever I talk about <laughs> dating to my gay friends, I'm like, oh dude, it's so much easier being straight. Oh, hundred percent. It hundred percent is. <laughs> my sister, my sister used to say that. Oh, oh so much easier being straight. <laughs> oh, you know? really? I thought it'd be much easier being like a gay woman. No. Right? Oh, no, really? No. She, she oh. just said it was a lot easier. It was a lot easier. And all, all my, my gay friends say the same thing, Wayne. Oh, really? I wish I was straight. Yeah, it, honestly, it's the truth. Well, it's, I think in this generation, <laughs> I mean, it's a great thing that our generation of, um, you know, gay men uh, are very sex positive, right? Like mm. they're very happy to you know, open to talk about sex and, and that's a great thing. But it really, to me, it really kills the dating scene because so many times... I'm, I'm, I like to think that in a relationship or in a dating sense that I'm quite a traditional person yeah. where I would date someone, get to know them, you know, get, get into a relationship, be quite exclusive. That's me, you know, just, just really kind of, yeah. you know, can't say boring, but you no, know, but it's sort of age. old school values, right? Yeah. Mm. But there's been so many times I go on dates with people and then all of a sudden you find out, oh, hang on, they're already in a relationship and then oh, or, okay. or someone's looking for a third or there's, um, you know, and that's fine. That's totally um, all good. It's just but, not you. 
it's not me. And I don't know, I think maybe me feelings wise, my feelings get hurt pretty bad when there's someone else in the picture. Has, like, yeah. has it been hurt in the past? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Heaps of times. Here or in Sydney? Both. Oh, really? Yeah, both. No wonder yeah. why you got your guard up, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. It's, and so you should. Yeah, I think, well, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's it's like a, a crossroad here between like social acceptance of sex positivity, but then what for me becomes a, a detriment to it is the fact that I'm I'm risking my feelings. Like, I'm, yeah. you know, like, because you, you really are in yeah. some regard, you know, you get, and also um, this is a very ignorant uh, assumption that's made. Um, but you know, if you're a gay man in a relationship, there is an expectation or an assumption that you are in an open relationship. Is it's it? almost like one of the biggest pickup lines is hi, I'm in a relationship sometimes. So like, it's really, yeah. And there's no judgment. There's not like, no, I don't, I don't, it's just not you. It's yeah. It's just not, it's not really my, my cup of tea. Um, I couldn't, I'm just, I think maybe I'm too much of a jealous person or maybe I'm too, too much, too tradi traditional. There's nothing um, wrong with that though. Like, no. especially if you, if you're wanting to see a future with someone. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's just this, you know, I don't think, look, it would be great fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's hard. I think it's actually hard to then, if you're going through all of that, to suddenly go, you know, I've had enough. I want to get into mm. something that's a bit more personal emotional and just yeah. you know i don't want to go out on the weekends i just want to sit home and yeah cuddle up with someone well i mean i i love going out i'm such a big social person but like i've seen couples who, who do it really well like i've I, i've got heaps yeah. of friends who, have, who are open and i've seen how they communicate with each other about it and they're really really happy doing it and good for them like you know and they're very like they've been together for a long time so um it works for some people it just doesn't mm. work for me you know, sure. It just, sure. It's just, it's just, it's just, yeah. Not, not so, me. so are you? Do you think you're in the minority of of that way of thinking in Sydney? I don't. I I am too scared to answer that question because <laughs> I feel like whichever answer I give, it will, <laughs> it could be sure. false to some people, and it could actually offend some people too. Yeah. Um, so, I don't. I'm not sure. I I. I I guess my answer would be if I was to get into a relationship with someone, I would need to have the conversation about open relationships quite soon or sure. later. And Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson. <laughs> and Michael Jackson, of course. I no, mean. Michael Jackson is one of those, like you said, you sneak the track in and see oh, yeah. a reaction. You sneak it in. Oh, Otherwise, it's important. Yeah. Well, well, like my twin's got a boyfriend and we, and we live together. Thank God he likes Michael Jackson because that's all the person he is yeah. in the apartment. But um, no, but it's just, it's just like anyone who likes a sport. Or, or food. Who, or Food's food. important, yeah, right? Actually, food is very important as well. <laughs> I, yeah. Coming from like a Asian background, yeah. <laughs> where we sort of eat anything yeah. and we enjoy food, yeah. it would be very hard. Now, I see I can relate in the straight community. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are people that just can't eat this, can't eat that. I just, God, yeah. you know, thank God I'm not single, but I just don't know. That would be a hard thing to navigate. Imagine being so attracted to someone, you start to get feelings for them, but yet, they can only eat this and they can't eat this and they can eat this. It'd be so hard oh, to go yeah. out on dates. I I think I'd be okay with that because I eat horribly. <laughs> My diet is so bad. <laughs> do you so, cook? Uh, no, I do, but it's really bad. It's not good. I'm a horrible, like. It's... So when you're back here, you'll, hopefully your mum will listen to this. Yeah. Has she taught you how to cook? Um, is, they... your, is your mum a good cook? My, be my careful, is, Jermaine. Uh, be I, careful. I was going to say, my mum's a good cook. My dad's a better cook. Yeah. Oh, she'll okay. be fine with me saying that. <clears throat> she'll be fine with me saying that. But um, you no, know, they have taught me. They've taught me a, a few different things. I'm just, I don't know. Oh. It's just not. I don't find joy in it. That was my oh, Jermaine, yeah, I know. I, I, put I, on, blame it on the boogie. <laughs> start cooking around in your jocks. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I remember when I went to Sydney. That was one thing. Every weekend, I spent time with my mum mm -hmm. to learn how to cook, and she basically gave me a recipe book of hers <clears throat> because I knew once I'm there, I won't be able to taste this food. Yeah. And so I learned that way. And I think I became a better cook when I moved over and I was on my own. Yeah. Practice, 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 practice. Mm. Um, it's weird. Out of all my friends, there's eight of us that grew up together. We're all the cooks. Yeah, right. In our families, except one. 
but most of us do the cooking. Yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's it's probably a Burmese thing, I'm assuming, right? No, no. Like, like no? none of my friends are Burmese. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, they're all different. Um, But yet, yeah, I don't know. Is it your dad that's Burmese? Or yeah, my dad's oh, and your Burmese. Mum's Mauritius. Mauritian, yeah. And, and my dad oh, used Mauritius. to never cook. <clears throat> he was never a cook. And oh. then he just, once we were born and once we were kids, he just found this love for it so maybe it's a late thing maybe maybe in in five six years time maybe i might i think you should do a cooking it. class i should do a you, cooking and class. then you meet someone there oh that's, okay that's grounded you know <laughs> <laughs> i thought you said you want me to host a cooking class no so i'm just like well oh, oh. yeah no. everyone's gonna die in that in that, yeah. <laughs> that class but um yeah that sounds like it doesn't sound like a bad idea i'll get new hobbies but i don't, I don't think he's cook like what? yeah, I don't think. Oh like, yeah, true. Because in they, Sydney, I don't think they cook. They don't give me that that vibe. They no, it's true. Me. Because I, I mean, my wife and I, we eat out all the time. Yeah, like right. it's very. But I love cooking. Yeah, right. Okay. Like I'm like I want to cook. I don't know. I just get something from it. I suppose. Yeah, cooking. Yeah, but it's not for everyone. I suppose. You know what it is also. I my body has this inability to regulate temperature. <laughs> it's so it's so stupid. So whenever I cook and there's too much heat. I get really grumpy and I'm I'm overheating and everything like that as well. So I think that could be <laughs> the reason I can why. Imagine, I can imagine a speed dating thing with you. Oh, yeah, no. I, now, I was... look, if you don't like MJ and, you know, the open relationship, I want to settle down and my body temperature overheats when I cook, yeah, no, which makes true. me grumpy. It's Are you okay with that? Next. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> It's true. It's true. If you, also, if your apartment doesn't have aircon, see you later. It's not going to happen. Yeah, because that's where, thing where are you too. living over there now? I live in the city. I live in World Square. Oh, like, I know that you building. Know the World Tower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was being built. It's it was being built as I was leaving. I think. Oh no, yeah. it's before that. Yeah, yeah, before right. That. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice place. I, like I lived it. in Sussex Street. Oh yeah, I know and that is. and I lived in Piermont for most of it, right behind Darling Harbour. Oh so yes, beautiful. I I is that where Tumbleong Park is? Tumbleong Park. Oh, is that new? Could be new. Near the Glebe Island Bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah just yeah, before, yeah. just after Darling. I Do you know, I worked in Darling Harbour and I hear now they're knocking down the um, the old part of Darling Harbour where all my work was. Oh, really? Yeah, where the, where the Glebe, the Piermont Bridge Hotel. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I walk past there every single day to go to work. Cause, I do? Because Nova's in Piermont. Well, you yeah. know where what road is Nova? Uh, Saunders. There, Saunders Street. Yeah, that's where I lived. Oh, really? You know the apartment at the end. Is this the pal the Palladium? Yeah. Oh, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne. I lived there. Wayne, when I moved to Sydney, that was where I stayed. No. In your apartment building. Really? That was where I stayed for two weeks before I found my apartment. Oh my god. That is cr in Miller Street. You talking yeah, about Miller. 102 well, Miller I've, Street? I've lived in yeah 102 Miller, and I've lived in Saunders Street. Because Saunders Street, right at the end of Saunders Street, there's a big apartment complex. Yeah. I lived in two apartments in that building, and I lived in Miller Street too. Wait, in the this is crazy. How weird is this? We're <laughs> out of everywhere. Sydney adventure. This is coming back. The first place I moved into is where you lived. Wow. 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 And it was a new apartment when I, when I was there. Wow. So they just sort of built. I mean, Saunders Street was up, but it was very new. Mm. Um, people were still buying the apartments yeah. and I moved in then and then Miller Street, I moved in after, but I loved that area. Yeah. yeah I nice. loved that area. It's nice. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I, I always look at that place and be like, well, that was just like the humble beginnings. I dated someone who lives in that building as well. Oh, so really? you know, I feel like yeah. everyone just lives there. Is this like a conspiracy <laughs> that everyone like, who knows Perth people live in that building? Yeah. Oh, right. Is it a Perth thing to go over and live in Piermont? Yeah, quite possibly. I love Potts Point though. Potts Point's nice. Mm. Um, I lived, Darlinghurst. Kind of, I lived in Woolloomooloo, which was like, oh yeah, but like te technically it was kind of. Well, point. I know what you're saying. I lived in McDonald yeah. Street, um, which is right down, you know, you go down McClay Avenue, yep. McClay Street, and yep. then it's right down the end is McDonald Street. And after that's Woolloomooloo. Yep. So I, I lived on that sort of oh, yeah. area, but oh man, they're just talking about it. I love it. I know. But the, you know, it's changed. The King's Cross is not the King's Cross I knew. I oh, know. It's, it's quite dead at the moment. It's. It's yeah, but, you know, I expected a bit of grunge. You know, I used to have to pass people selling cocaine and <laughs> marijuana and then the the transvestite prostitutes that all wave to me and go, hi, hey, Wayne, how's oh, your yes. day? in front of Porky's. Yeah, in front yeah, of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I used to go through. So when I was there recently, I went out on a Friday night. I was like, okay, let's get a bit of cross. 
and I'm seeing families walking around yeah. and then there's these little cafes. I'm like, oh my what is God, this place <laughs> what has happened? I know. Yeah, no, it's, it's is it gentrification, um, I think, or just become too expensive to stay there. I think, I think that's probably what it is. I think the fact that it's yeah. really expensive to live there, but, um, a, a lot of gay men live in Potts Point. I think it's like the, well, like well, when I mean by that, a lot of my friends live in, yeah, sure, sure. Live in Potts Point. It's a nice. So mm. yeah, I think it's a more, it's become more of a safer place to live. If that, I don't know if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, sure. But like, um, I, I was there like, well, when I was in Sydney last, like a few weeks ago, and there was this really, really nice, wholesome family restaurant on Potts Point now. Um, there's a, called, yeah, I saw a few. Yeah, I was there. so it was a sp nice Spanish restaurant too. Yeah, so I think it's turning into a really, yeah. I mean, don't it's like wrong, a new town. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because when I went to Sydney for the first time, new town was still a bit rough. Yeah, but it was cool. Yeah, you know, it was this you could buy any sorts of trinkets and everything there. Yeah. but it was very bohemian. But also, it was quite rough. Mm -hmm. Now. Or oh, even not now, before we left Sydney, it has just become this really trendy, cool joint oh, to hang yes. out in. You oh, know? yes. And the only thing is there's not a lot of air con in New oh, right. So I, I, I try not to visit as much as I can because, and I don't understand what it is about Newtown, but every single time I go there, it's always humid. I'm like, I mean, obviously it's a coincidence, but I just feel <laughs> yeah. like, is there like a special little weather area in Newtown where it's just like, it's only humid here and everywhere else in Sydney is fine. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Have you been down the beaches at all? Um, no, I've only been to Bondi and uh, uh, Milk Beach. I think it's called Milk Milk, Milk Beach. Oh, okay. Um, but that's it. I, I, You're not a real beach girl. I, I'm too attached to the Perth beaches that I'm a little bit yeah, ignorant to the true, Sydney beaches. Yeah. So uh, I would like to go back though. Like when I go back, maybe I will start. To yeah. Look, I think if so, you've decided to go back. Oh yes, okay. Uh, yeah, well, we haven't we haven't really given context in this, but um, sure. So but, give give a bit of context. Yeah. So uh, I was here for uh, I'm here in the Christmas holidays here for a month, and um, with all the family, with all the family and everything like that. And this was really my moment to really start to think. Okay, it's been two years since you've come to Sydney since you moved. Uh, you've got to really start to think now. Is this where you want to live? Like, do you really want to stay here? So I thought I'd give it. Give myself a month here in Perth. Did anyone know that? No. Oh, no. Okay. I didn't, oh, I definitely didn't tell Jesse because he just moved. My twin. He just moved like yeah. a few months ago. But he's also got a partner. He's so got a partner. Yes. It's he's a got bit all that different. stuff. It's not but like I he's mean, alone completely, you know? I was begging him to come to Sydney. So I feel like <laughs> if I told him, I'm going to go to Perth and really think about it. Mm. Um, but I, it's 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 an individual thing that you've got to think yeah, about, right? Absolutely. Mm. I just think after like all the intense experiences that I've had in Sydney, I was like, am I really am I really built for this? Like, am I really built for th this world of, you know, sure. media and entertainment where it's just, it's, it's hectic and it's constantly intense. And yes, you can find your peace and you can find all these places, you know, to relax and, but is this the thing. lifestyle I want? Is right? this the lifestyle I want? Mm. And, you know, I'm turning 30 this year, you know, damn, no messing around. <laughs> How dare you? I know exactly what that reference is too. <laughs> That's why, that's why I said. <laughs> I didn't mean it like I'm that. I'm already anxious enough about I didn't turning mean it 30. like that, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, but uh, Damn. I'm turning 30, mm. and I've, I was, you know, I've really got to think is this really what I want to do? Yeah. Came, I thought I'd come here, really just kind of explore everything. And I mean, everything. I was seeing, you know. Well, you're exploring Yang Chip, which is a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose because I'm oh, I, yeah. I'm like you. I'm a city guy. Yeah. Right. And um, <laughs> I like to walk out and have a coffee at eleven at night, or go and have some Thai food. It's weird, like going to visit my parents. They live in Morley. Yeah. And I'm feel like I'm in the country, and I'm just yeah. driving out. Just going. I can't <laughs> imagine Yanchip. <laughs> Yanchip. Yanchip's so far. I like Yanchip, but yeah, it's just like it's a it's it's a real pocket, isn't it? Well, it's I've also just... heard it's developing quite a bit. Yes, it's it's very like nice. a friend of mine lives in Yanchip. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, no, Yanchip is nice. Um, uh, well, I, I normally go there just for a bit of relaxation. R and R. Yeah, R and R. Mm. You know, but then um, you know, I spent some time in the city. And you know, really just had a lot of fun and yeah. met everyone and you know and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, I don't know. I I I think Sydney is more home to me now. Oh yeah, than, it's than it's Perth. it's definitely my favourite city. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, I mean, I love because we've made Perth our home. 
Yeah. We've taken the negatives that we saw as negatives and turned them into positives. So, you know, when I was in my, tw when I was 23, it was just like, Perth is just like so slow and it's like <laughs> sleepy hollow, you know? And, um, but coming back, I appreciated that time, mm. that extra time. It feels like you've got an extra eight hours in the day. Yeah. I appreciate that being an older guy as well. Mm. So it's now become an advantage mm. and yet I can still travel to all these like big cities and yeah. enjoy them. And then it's nice to come back. But in my, you know, I spent all my twenties in Sydney, mm. loved every moment of it, even the negatives that happens. That's why I was trying to say to you, like, doing. I think in retrospect, in a few years, when you look back, you're like, I'm glad I had that experience. Yes. I'm glad I came in, in a literally thrown within this whirlwind. Yeah. But this is what I've learned from it. And you're still young. I know you, people, I know you're turning 30. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I know you're turning 30, <laughs> but at, you know, you're constantly going to have these voices. Yeah. Like at 40, you're going to have a voice of, I wonder where I want to live. Yeah. At 50, you'll have that. So yeah. I think, but it, I think it's healthy, Jermaine. I think it's healthy not to just be locked and go, you know, you may not even be in Australia, mm -hmm. but it's nice to keep those things open and go, you know, I'm just curious. I want to explore the world. I want to explore about more about myself. You may not even end up in radio. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought I'd be podcasting? So, <laughs> but you'll find your footing somewhere. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely do think what you're saying is, is absolutely correct. And I do, I think that, um, I'm in that mindset right now of, you know, you know, these voices <laughs> or, or these, you know, these, uh, this, this character talking to me in a very, um, what's the, what's the word? Not negative, but you know, oh my God, what is going on? What is this? Um, you know, I think it's, it's only happening now because I'm really starting to process it all. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, when you're in it, it's just like, like, you know, you, 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 you heard me when I had that chat with you a few months ago, or whenever it was a year ago, where I was just like, oh my God, everything is just absolutely crazy. Yeah. No time for anything. And you were just like, I'm not enjoying it, Wayne. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was not having a good time. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I'm just still processing just absolutely everything that Sydney sure, has sure. thrown to me. Um, and I don't think you need to make a decision now. Yeah. Just go mm. back and, you know, just go with the flow. Just, I think, let go a bit more. Yeah. Because what? Letting go will also take, alleviate a lot of stress mm -hmm. that you don't know you're holding on to. Yeah. You know, but you know, cause you're thinking I've got to make these decisions. Who says you don't have to make them right now. Mm, that's true. I had a conversation with my twin actually about like, what are we going to be doing next? Because, you know, we had our time apart <clears throat> for such a long time. And now that we're both in Sydney, I was like, do we start to you know, get into things that we really want to do? Like, you know, let's start writing and let's start directing and let's make all these films sure. together. And then he was like, what's the rush? And I was like, well, you're here. We're in Sydney. We're going to do, let's make it happen now. And he's like, you've got all the time in the world. Like we're, we're, we're here. Yeah. Like, I this, think you guys probably this, make a good balance. Yeah. Cause Sometimes he would need that push. Yeah. Otherwise it's so easy to just sit back and let life yeah. pass you by. Yeah. You know, before you know it, and I'm sure your parents, because they're probably my age or younger, <laughs> um, they will think from 30 and up, time just flies. Flies, yeah. But I like the balance there. Yeah. I think Jesse's right. And I think you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just think you've just got to pick your moments, but live a simple life. You know, make your life as simple as you can mm -hmm. so you can enjoy those simple, beautiful things. Yeah. If it's in that whirlwind, it's very hard to enjoy just a peaceful moment by yourself. So you already know that that wasn't for you. Mm -hmm. So when you start to find yourself getting back into that footing, put the brakes on, go, look, I'm wanting a more simple life where I can do these other things. You know, I can go and do these hobbies that I've always wanted to do. I can get into an acting class in Sydney if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Keep, don't forget, don't get yourself in too much debt. Yes. Because debt is like the modern day slavery, right? You end yep. up doing all this shit that you don't want to do just to pay a debt you don't yeah. really need. So I think, you know, bring your debt down. And if you don't have any other debt besides your rent, then you're fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So make yourself a bit, you know, give yourself a bit more of a simple life where you can enjoy the, and most of the beautiful things, Jermaine, you get for free. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. most of them you get for free, but it's so easy to get caught up in that, in, on that train when you're in a big city like Sydney, yes. New York, London. And before you know it, 10 years has gone past and 
you've just been on this like rat wheel. Yeah. That's, yeah. And suddenly you're like, oh my God, you know, I just need to slow down and enjoy it a bit. And I think you also appreciate that lifestyle too. It goes with the traditional values of a partner, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, that's true. That is true. Um, but no, yes, I, th I think everything you're saying is like a big glass of cold water. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's. That's stuff you know, it, sort of. It's the stuff I know, but it's the stuff that can easily just kind of, you can lose sight of it yeah. very easily when you get into the. Into the zone. Into, into the zone, into mm. the midst of everything. And it's that thing, like I was saying, the biggest challenge in Sydney for me is just remembering who I was to keep. That. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and it will get there. It will get there with that. Yeah. I do, I You'll do start know. forming a balance. Over yeah. There. Yeah. Like already you seem a lot happier, you yes. know, and all it took was one little change, right? Yeah. So now you just make those simple little changes and it's not hard. Yeah. If you just, if you have a, a baseline of, I need to make my life more simple, mm -hmm. not like if you find a partner, do they complement your life or complicate it? Simple. Mm -hmm. Right. If it becomes a complication, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing to do is keep them around. But that's with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, does this complement my life or complicate it? Does this job complement who I am or or complicate it? Yeah. And th that's your sort of that's your is it litmus test? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And sort of um and then you'll find your life become a little bit more simple where you can enjoy those simple things. If you want to go for a walk, or just go and have some nice food and not worry about tomorrow or your ambition or your career and you know yeah i mean if i could go back to my 20 year old self this would be the exact thing <laughs> wayne because for me my problem was is it was ego mm -hmm. it was you know it was ego in the fact that i told everyone why i was going to sydney and what i wanted to do in sydney so when i was in sydney i i had blinders on to all these other beautiful things that came into my life that I ignored because I had to be this person of a, you know, a writer or a director. And I didn't go to New Zealand. I could have gone to New Zealand and visited New Zealand. All these major events happened during that time. I've got no idea because I was just in that tunnel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'd say to myself, you know, I was in one of the best cities in the world and I just didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to enjoy Sydney when I left and then started going back and going to all these beautiful places and just sitting in Hyde Park. Like when I went back last, we just went through Hyde Park on a beautiful day. And I just sat there uh, with something to eat, watched the, watched the world go by a bit, but it totally reset me it totally. Cause you're walking with everyone and, mm -hmm. and suddenly that little moment, I thought, when did I do that living here for nine years? Because I was always crossing Hyde Park to get somewhere. When did I ever just sit down and watch the world go by and enjoy it? You know, and I've, I, I've never done that. And I lived right next to Hyde Park. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's such a beautiful park, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, look, you, you're getting wiser as you, you've been through the turmoil. Yeah. Great job. It was just a lot of it and busy. Mm -hmm. and great people, but you take the positives from that and move it to your new job. And already I can feel you, <sighs> yeah. you know, yeah. but it's just making time for those, the most important moments, those simple moments of where's Jermaine in this picture, Yeah, you know, in yeah. this world. Mm. Well, man, wow. next time you come on, <laughs> it'll be a couple of years and it'll be like, okay, it, it, it's this, you remember that seven up show? Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit, yeah, Jermaine Devore. Yeah, seven up. Seven up. Yeah. But no, but this could be also be called the Uncle Wayne series. Uncle Wayne, <laughs> were you giving me all, all the advice? Yeah, and next minute, J Jermaine's like in his fifties. Like, Jermaine, have you met anyone? I've just gone more fussy over the line. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not just Michael Jackson. It's this artist. This artist. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I'll be like, great. I want. I now want to be in an open relationship at fifty. And you're like, oh god, here we go. And that's so. 20 years ago. I know, yeah, exactly. How, what kind so, of hell is it? Yeah, that? yeah. That's so 2020. Yeah, no, no, we're about. all traditional now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, you're just missing. You're just missing everything. <laughs> My gosh. Uh, right. But hey, Wayne. Love I, you, man. I, and, uh, oh, thank you. No. Thank you. Okay. You left me hanging there for Sorry, like five I was, seconds. I was closing my eyes. <laughs> I was taking everything that you said. Everything uh, Uncle Wayne was teaching me, I was Uncle taking Wayne. it in. <laughs> yeah. And I can imagine your mum and dad listening going, 
Yeah. 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 Because yep. they will know you better than I and better than anyone would know you, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, but, you know, it's just one of those things too. Coming from you, Wayne, like, you know, I feel like I share so many like I see a lot experiences. of yeah, experiences. I think also like, you know, ever since doing classes with you, like, you know, uh, when was that? 2019 mm-hmm. or 2020, you know, like you just felt like already, it felt like I already knew you. Yeah. Do you like know an I mean? old family member. Yeah. And, and we, and you know, you would, you know, teach me acting and things about film and it was, it was just everything that uh, I'm, I'm about and what I, what I enjoy. So it's, yes, I can have family talk, can have friends talk, but someone being who's, an older guy who's been, yeah, there in Sydney, especially I'm I'm a guy that went to Sydney and made a life there, and yeah. so I can we can talk about similarities. And yeah, stuff you like. understand. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah, I'll definitely really take it in. And because trust me, you're gonna love Sydney. Yeah, if you take that time, I wish I did. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish I did. I wish I took those moments to really soak in the beauty of Sydney, instead of being on a marathon all the time. Mm-hmm. And even on that marathon, I still appreciated Sydney, but I, you know, the love of it, just when I go back, I take those moments and just like, oh my God, this is such a beautiful city. And I even did the, what is it? Um, artists on the, on the shore, the beach. What's the, the you know, the artists that put all the sculptures, oh, sculptures by the sea. By the sea yeah. I did that in Sydney. Oh, I've right. never done that here. Oh wow! And I walked from Maroubra all the way to Bondi. And, uh, and saw that and just took time out and had, you know, had a drink and coffee and I'd never done that. Yeah. You know, so it's just, that's my only advice is take, simplify your life, take moments out for Jermaine just as a reset and enjoy the beauty of Sydney. You know, I'll always, it'll always be my favorite place. So yeah. I'm, I'm a bit envious that you're there and I'll try and live through you, <laughs> your experiences. <laughs> I'll be like, look, wait a minute, Hyde Park, like he said. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. I'll be like, shit. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thanks. Yeah, Thank no you. worries, man. I'm I so glad you it. came back. And um, yeah, anytime you're around, just say, Wayne, I want to come on the podcast. <laughs> you know, you can say that, right? So yes. just come on. We want to have a chat, you know. And we'll do that from now on. But best of luck with everything. Thanks. Thanks, Uncle Wayne.